Hello and welcome to TAT Express. I'm Adam and on this channel we go over maintenance and repair for class 8 on highway trucks. If you haven't subscribed to the channel be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know next time we release another video. In this video we will be covering what we found on a unit with just over 400k miles and a report of low power. Guys make sure to like and share the video. If you are tra traveling through the lower states be sure to give us a shout. We are located just off of Interstate 20 in Dallas, Texas. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, be sure to give us a call at 972-225-3017. Let's get right into this video. Okay, the complaint that we received on this particular unit was low power. Since this is the first time that we've checked this truck, we collected as much repair history as possible. During the troubleshooting, we found low compression for cylinder number six. So we decided to run an overhead valve adjustment and retorquing of the injector hold down bolts. We found that the valves were in fact tight. After after running the overhead, we retested to see if we had any differences in compression readings and the change was not much. At this point, we have to go further into the engine to find a root cause of low compression. Now, PSL suggests we run a manual compression test and I've noticed with manual tests, the results may be erratic due to the, due to the already high compression of a 15 liter. We have experienced a relative compression test with low compression results, but a manual test with normal compression results. So we recommend removing the head for further inspection. Okay, since compression is so high on a diesel engine, it's important that no compression is lost. Lost compression will result in low performance. Compression is designed to be held by the piston, piston rings, cylinder liner, head gasket, injector, and intake and exhaust valve. When we pull off the head, we are looking for signs of compression loss. This can be indicated first by the injector once removed. When combustion gases are passing through the injector, you will notice soot on the body of the injector. Since the head is completely removed, we will rotate the engine until the suspected cylinder is at bottom dead center. Be sure to mark your position when rotating to avoid losing timing. This will allow us to examine the liner for scuff marks. If scuff marks are found, this is an indication of a liner wear. The engine would need a liner kit or depending on the condition of the engine, a complete overhaul may be needed. Another item we examine is the cylinder head gasket. Signs of escape exhaust gases should be clear to see around the ceiling surfaces. So since we didn't find anything on the cylinder liner, we didn't find anything on the injector on the injector body, we didn't find anything on the head gasket, this leaves us to examine the cylinder head. The cylinder head for a DD15 is very unique. The head houses an idler gear at the rear of the head. This idler gear is what drives the dual overhead cams. What this means is that there's limits in the rebuilding process. Resurfacing the head is not an option. There are limited options on getting the heads checked out by a head shop. In fact, some head shops will not work on DD15 heads. And the ones that do only offer limited repairs and limited warranties. So how do we check the head and how do we know it's bad? Well, we already know that cylinder number six has low compression and we have troubleshot it down to the cylinder head. Now, since we know the truck was run with valves that were out of adjustment, we are going to check to see if the valve seat are sealed. Now a head shop can run a vacuum to confirm the seal but most of the time it will take an additional week. So what we're going to do is a quick and easy test to see if the valve seats are leaking. We have the head turned over on the exhaust side. We're going to be doing this test on both sides the exhaust side and the intake side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the port with diesel fuel and if we get fuel leaking through the valve seats within 30 seconds this is an indication that the valve seat is not sealed. So let's get right into this test. So we're going to pour the fuel into number six. This is number six. This is where the idler gear goes. Let's go ahead and pour fuel into the intake port. So here we go. We're going to pour fuel into the intake port. Let's go ahead and fill this intake port up right away. You can see leaking. Like I said, we're going to be looking for leaks within 30 seconds. And as you can see, as soon as I pour it, we have it leaking out right here on this valve seat. We can see it leaking. And that's an indication that we do not have a solid seal on this particular valve seat. I'm going to pour some here in number five so you can see the difference here. So we fill up this port. We have no fuel coming out on number five. So you can see the difference. We have fuel coming out in this particular valve. The valve seat's not sealing. This, this port, both ports are full with fuel. After 30 seconds, we don't see anything leaking on this one. This one constantly leaking. So that's an indication we have a valve seat that is not sealing. This is number six. So this is where our root cause of loss of compression is. 
Due to the turnaround time and limited warranty for a valve replacement, we are recommending a complete head replacement. We have the head on now and we're just about finishing up so we can get the customer back on the road. So guys, that's what we found on a DD15 with low power. If you're experienced low power and you would like to schedule an appointment for troubleshooting, please call us at 972-225-3017. Guys, I hope you learned something. Be sure to hit that like and share button, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know next time we release another video. If you'd like to share your experience, leave it in the comments below. Until next time guys, be safe.